Hi, I'm Glenn Jewis. Welcome to episode 63. And this week, I've got a really quick technique, which is also really cool, showing you how you can take a daytime photograph, like this one here of this side street, and very quickly turn it into a nighttime scene, complete with lighting. All right, so before we dive into this week's tutorial, just a very quick thank you from me to everyone who watched last week's video. It seemed really popular, getting a lot of views very quickly, and I kind of think that's because it was really short. It was only five minutes, a compositing quick tip to help you blend in anything that you cut out and put it into the scene by matching the color. So I get the feeling that these short ones are kind of the way to go, which is really handy for me at the moment because I'm tending to find that every spare minute I've got, I'm buried into the computer and the keyboard, finishing off the book to get it ready to send off to the publishers. So that's kind of handy because this week's tutorial is also very, very quick. And that's, like I said, where we can turn a daytime scene like this street in Bath in Somerset into a nighttime scene complete with all the lighting. So let's crack on. Let's have a look then at the out of camera shot, which is this one just here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do then is the nighttime conversion. We've got our picture open, we've got the layer in the, uh, the background layer in the layers panel. I'm gonna create a copy of that by pressing Command or Control J. Now to do the nighttime scene, I'm gonna use Camera Raw. So because we're using a filter, I go to Filter and Convert for Smart Filters to give us the flexibility of making changes later on if we need to. Then I go back to Filter menu and choose Camera Raw Filter. And the way I'm gonna turn this into nighttime is by by grabbing the temperature slider, dragging it over to the left to introduce quite a lot of blue into the scene. Doesn't look good at the moment, but then we grab the exposure slider, bring that over to the left to darken everything down. And that's when it starts to take on the look of nighttime. Get to here, you think maybe too much blue, but we can back it off just a touch. So straight away, we can see that we can make it look a little bit more like the nighttime. We can always change it later on, but for now, we'll just click OK. And we'll close this layer up because we don't need to see the layer mask that comes attached to this smart filter. So we'll close that to there. The next thing we do, we now need another copy of our background layer. So I'm gonna click on the background, press Command or Control J, and then I'm gonna drag that to the top of the layer stack. And this is the layer that I'm gonna apl apply the, the lighting. The color of that light source is gonna be put onto this layer now. We're gonna use again, Camera Raw. Because we're using a filter, we go Convert for Smart Filters. And then once it's converted it, and we can tell it's converted it because it gets this little icon in the uh, thumbnail just over here in the bottom right hand corner. Once we've got that, we go then filter and camera raw. Now this time, rather than going to the left with the temperature slider, we're gonna drag it over to the right hand side to introduce this yellow coloring of the lamp that's on the wall here and the light that's gonna be coming through the door. We can increase it even further by going to the HSL grayscale tab, clicking on the orange slider, dragging that over to the right to increase the oranges. We can increase the yellows and maybe just push a little bit of red into there as well. And it's looking really kind of strange at the minute, but because this is gonna be a light source, at night time if you have a light hitting the wall or hitting the floor, where it hits does have increased contrast. And we can fake that now by adding in just a little bit of clarity. But again, we don't need to worry about getting the numbers exactly right because we are coming in here as a smart filter. But I'll take it to 70 just for now. Click OK, that'll send it back into Photoshop. And again, I'll close this layer up because we don't need to see, we won't be using the layer mask that comes with this smart filter. Okay, so this is gonna be the color of our light source, but we don't want it in all the picture, so we're gonna hide it behind a black layer mask. So we're gonna hold down the option, or alt key, click on the layer mask icon to hide it. Then we're gonna get a brush with a white foreground color, because we know when we use layer masks that white reveals black conceals. So we're gonna get a white foreground color, choose a brush, and just make sure it's at 0% hardness, and we'll make sure there's no settings in there whatsoever. Once we've done that, at the top of the screen here, we've got our options. We've got the opacity and the flow. I'm going to put the opacity to around about 50%-ish, something like that. But also, there's an icon just to the right-hand side of it. That's where we can turn on or off the pressure sensitivity. And I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. I also occasionally use an Intuos Pro tablet. And I don't always have the pressure sensitivity turned on. I like to control it as and when I want to use it. And I can do that by just pressing down 
down that little icon at the top of the screen. Once you've done that, and by the way, if you don't have a tablet, if you're using a mouse, you can just do this by changing the opacity levels. It basically means now the harder or lighter I press determines how much uh, white is laid down to that layer mask and how much of that colouring shows through. So let's have a look then. I want to put some that turn it on, sorry, make it look as if this street lamps turn on. So let's just press down just a few times in this kind of area here just to brighten up that part of the wall. And then I'm going to just press down a little bit softer the further away from the light source we go. I might lower the opacity just a touch more as well. So I'm just going to paint just a few areas down here just to make it look as if that street lamp's on. It's hitting the wall and it's also hitting the sort of street down below as well. Just a little bit onto the pavement and onto the roadside, something like that. Now you can take your time doing this just to really finesse it, but you can see already how quickly we can make it look as if that street lamp's on and we're getting the light on to the wall. So that's a street lamp. Now let's make let's now let's work on the doorway here so it makes it look as if something's going on beyond this wall and there's a light in the doorway shining out onto the street. Now the way we do that, I'm going to turn off the pressure sensitivity. I'm going to take the opacity all the way up to 100% and I'm actually going to make the brush 100% hardness. That's going to make it easier now when I fill in the actual doorway because we've got very straight lines and we don't want to have the light spilling over, which it would do if we used a soft brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click once at the top, hold down my shift key, click at the bottom, that's going to draw a straight line. Holding down my shift key again, we'll click across the bottom. Keeping the shift key held down, I'll click right up that area there. So it's a very quick way of us drawing lines. So let me just kind of paint in this area here. And again, I'm going to be doing this very, very quickly. Obviously, when we do this for real, we take a lot more time. But let's just quickly paint in this area of the arch just at the top. If there's areas that you go over that you want to uh, kind of get rid of, rather than painting in white to reveal it, just paint in black to conceal it. So if I just zoom in, there's just a few little areas here I want to get rid of. So let's just paint in black to take it off this part of the wall here so it doesn't look like it's spilling out. So get rid of that just there. And this little bit at the top, paint that away just there, something like that. Again, just doing it really, really quickly to give you an idea. Oh, a little bit off there we'll get rid of as well. Decrease the size of the brush and we'll just paint that off just there. All right, so zooming down, let's just fill the rest of this in, increase the size, whoop, increase the size of the brush, painting with white, just filling in the doorway like this. And now we want to make it look as if it's spilling out onto the street. And this is really simple to do. I'm going to decrease the size of the brush. I'm going to click in the bottom right hand corner of this doorway. So I'll click there, hold down my shift key, and then bring my cursor across to the other side of the road and click. And that's going to draw a straight line. To do the other side, I'm going to click once in the other corner at the bottom of the doorway. Hold down my shift key and click on the opposite side of the road. So it does that really quickly. Then I can just zoom in increase the size of the brush and fill the rest of the space in like this. Just again, just doing it really quickly just to show you the effect here. Something like that. Change the foreground color to black just to take it off this area where we've gone on too far. So click there, shift and click gets rid of it like so. So there we've got our light on the wall illuminated, brightening up the wall. We've also got the light in the doorway with it coming out onto the street. But what if we want to actually not have the light in the doorway not quite as bright as it is. You would think because it's on a layer, maybe you just lower the opacity of that layer. But the problem with that is, sure enough, it sort of like lessens the brightness of the light in the doorway on the road, but it also reduces the brightness of the light on the wall. So we can't use the opacity. What we need to do is make use of the layer mask. Now, before I reduce the brightness of the light in the doorway on the road, what I want to do is just kind of soften down the light that's coming out here. Because when I zoom in and we look at this, the light coming across the street here is a very straight, very sharp line going across. And in reality, it would have a little bit of softness to it. So what I'm going to do is, while we're actually active on the layer mask, and you can see the sort of like framing going around it here in the layers panel, I'm going to get my lasso tool and I'm going to make a very rough selection 
of the actual light on the road there. Then I'm going to, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just add in a two pixel radius of blur just to soften it down. Now if I zoom in, you can probably see the effects that's having. That's before, that's after, before, after. In fact, probably just one pixel radius would be enough just to take out that really sharp edge. We'll click OK, select, and deselect. So that's, that's looking good. But to kind of like make it not quite so bright, if we look at the layer mask, holding down the Option key or the Alt key, click on the layer mask, we can see what we've got here. We have the white area which reveals the light source at its brightest. What I want to do is kind of like make that white not quite so white. And the way we do that is by going to Image, Adjustments, and using Levels here. And in the actual levels here at the bottom, we've got the output levels. Just this little bar going across here, this little gradient. And basically what this saying is, this little pointer on the left here, the black, that is the area in the picture that is black. These areas here is saying what areas are white. But I can actually tell it to change what's white in the picture by clicking on this little marker and dragging it inwards to say, look, actually this part of the bar here, this is what's white. And anything white in the picture it'll turn it in the layer mask to that particular shade of gray, as we can see now in the layer mask. So this is before and this is after. Hopefully you can see on your screens how that's changing the color from being pure white to a bit of a gray. Now, if I do that, so when we're actually looking at our picture, you'll see the effect it has. So let's just click on the Option or Alt key, click on the layer mask to bring us back to our picture. I'm now going to make a rough selection around the doorway and the road. So when I use my levels adjustment, it only affects that part of the layer mask. Then I go to image, adjustments and levels. And just like we did before, I take the output levels here, the white point and drag it in. And as I drag it in, look at the light in the doorway and on the road and look how it gets dimmer. That's full brightness that's not quite so bright. So I can use this now to control how white that is on the layer mask, which in turn determines how bright the light source is coming out of the door and hitting the road as well. So we click OK, select and deselect. And let's just, whoops, select and deselect. Double click on the hand tool to go to full screen view. Okay, so this is just a really quick overview to show you how you can take a daytime scene, turn it to a nighttime scene purely by using two layers, the camera raw filter, layer masks, and a brush. Really simple, really easy, and it's a very, very quick run through. But when you're doing this on your own pictures, there'll be extra little things that you'll do which will help take the effect to another level, which is a phrase I use quite a lot. And one of those things might be, for example, just on here, where the light's coming out of the door and onto the road, we have this kind of curb edge here where the curb side is joining the road. Now, this little curb here isn't actually in view of the light source, so that would be in shadow. So one thing you might consider doing will be adding a blank layer, getting a brush with a black foreground color, and we'll just kind of make it 100% on the hardness. And what you could do is you could maybe click on one side, shift click to go to the other side, then go to filter, blur, whoops, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, add a little bit of blur into that now to make it look as if that part of the curb stone there is a little bit in shadow. Turn it, click OK, turn it on and off like so. And then obviously you'd just get an eraser, anywhere that's spilled over, just paint it off the edges there. But that's all kind of stuff that you do to finesse it. But you can see how very quickly we can take a daytime scene and turn it into a nighttime scene. So I hope that's helpful. It's a nice little uh, effect there that you could do so many different things with now in your pictures, turn it into a nighttime scene. But like I say, I hope it's helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, click on the like button, share it with other people. And if you haven't already, you know the score, make sure you click on the subscribe button. That's all I've got for you for now. I'm off to the keyboard to do a bit more writing. I'll see you next week. Actually, one more thing to let you know about, and that's that I've uploaded the out-of-camera picture here, a JPEG version of this, onto my Creative Cloud so that you can download it and have a practice for yourself as well. So if you want to get the link for that and download it, just check out the description part of the video. Just click on that link. It'll take you through to the download. So have a go at it yourselves, and also let me know how you got on. But any questions, glynnatglynnjewish.com, and I'll see you next week.